So what I thought was that uh, before you guys start presenting, right, uh, what you're doing, uh, let me, uh, I have shared that before, but let me uh, reiterate uh, how you should present your ideas. When you have to present something, how you should, that's one way in which you can think of presenting your ideas. So which is what I call, one can call uh, the, right, okay, the, the five, the five watt approach, all right, the five watt approach, all right, so when you have to present your idea, what I'm saying is there are five questions that you should answer while presenting it, right, so what are those questions? All right, so the first one is, the first, what is the, what is the problem that you are solving or attempting to solve or presenting? What is the problem that you're solving? Solving and what is its importance. So basically you have to describe the problem and you have to describe, so that's the first word here. Describe the problem and its importance, right? So we are uh, many times, uh, remember the significance of your work, whatever work you're doing will be measured by how significant is the problem. You could be solving a very minor problem, spending a lot of time solving a very minor problem and although the result may be very nice, but it's a minor problem, nobody would pay much attention to it. You know, we are at a time when, uh, you know, the Nobel Prizes are being given, and those are the guys who have answered uh, important questions which have had a big impact. You also know that, uh, you know, a Nobel Prize, not a Nobel Prize, but an Ig Nobel is also given. Right, have you heard of Ig Nobel? No, none of you have heard of Ig Nobel? It's just the opposite of Nobel. Right, so there's an Ig Nobel Prize also, and there these guys spent a lot of time uh, answering silly questions in some sense, you know, a lot of time answering questions which are absolutely silly. Uh, so go and read about the Ig Nobel uh, Prizes also, they're given annually, and, uh, and you can see the kind of research that they've done as part of the Ig Nobel. So that's one extreme, right, they ans uh, trying to answer questions which are, uh, that uh, you know, answers that nobody is looking for, they're irrelevant. At the other extreme, you have the Nobel Prize, which are answering the questions which are of extreme importance. So this is something that you should uh, have a clarity on. What problem am I trying to solve? Is the community really looking for an answer? Do you see that a lot of people are uh, uh, working on this particular problem and there are no easy answers? and then you are working on it and, and trying to uh, come up with a solution here. So many times when people are presenting their work, they don't present the problem properly or its importance. And therefore the audience will miss the importance of your work, right? So that, that's the first what uh, question here. The second one is obvious. What is the state of the art? What is the state of the art? Yeah. I mean, it's very rare that you would be solving a problem that nobody has addressed before, right? Uh, no matter which problem you take, there are others who have worked on it. So you must talk about what is it that they have done? You know, what solutions have they proposed? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses of, uh, of, of, of their particular approach? Because when you talk about your work, you will talk about your solution rel uh, uh, with respect to what they have proposed. So the importance of your work will not come out unless you talk about what have others done, right? These are the things that the others did, and these are the strengths of their work, these are the weaknesses of the work. And so now, once you've talked about the problem and you've talked about the state of the art, now you set the stage for your work. So this is like setting the stage so that the audience is with you, understanding the importance of the problem, they know what is the background, what kind of work has already occurred before. So now is the third question. What, let's say, what unique, what unique insight 
is is your work based on is your work what unique insight is your way see it's an important problem you're working others have also worked they were, they've looked at it from this angle, that angle, they propose solutions, they, they, uh, you know, uh, this thing. Now you're saying, I'm trying to solve it in a new way. I'm trying to address it from a different angle. What is that unique insight that you have, that they missed? You are trying to solve it in a way which is different from others, right? So what is that unique insight on which your work is based on? Right, so yeah, emphasizing that particular aspect that is there. I'll illustrate these things with an example, right? Okay, so you have to highlight that. Then, so basically what you're saying is, yes, all these guys have uh, done something, but they've missed something, right? They didn't look at it in this way. They missed uh, this particular aspect. So I'm addressing that particular issue. Here. So now uh, you're saying, uh, you know, you're talking about your contribution. So what unique insight is your work based on? The next one is, of course, uh, what are the uh, advantages of your approach? So you quantify. So here is where you, you show actual results and uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, for example, if you're designing an amplifier, well, I can increase the uh, amplifier bandwidth by so much. Uh, you know, so your quantification of the advantages that are there. And the last thing that we often miss, we, uh, you know, when it is our work, we only want to talk about all the advantages that are there. We don't talk about what are the limitations of your work. So one needs to be honest here and talk about also, especially when you're writing a thesis, you write about future work and things like that. What are the limitations of your work? Right. What are the limitations of your work here? Right. So these are the five questions that you should try and answer when you are presenting your work and even when you are reading somebody else's work. Right. Somebody else's work. And you should look for okay, what is the problem. Uh, this thing. So maybe what one can do is one could define it by, uh, let's say, I, S, U, a L, right? A set of these five uh, numbers here. Yeah. Importance of the problem, uh, the state of the art, uh, the unique insight on which this work is based on, the advantages of that particular approach, and the limitations here. Yeah. So, a, you know, a, 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 as an acronym, uh, sort of remembering is, uh, uh, you know, it's not a nice acronym, it doesn't <laughs> sound nice, uh, ISUAL or whatever, I S U A L. Right, so these are the five things against which you should try and uh, evaluate somebody else. Let's say somebody is making a presentation, right, and you 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 have to evaluate how good is that presentation. It may be that the person never talked about state of the art, didn't explain. See, if you don't talk about the state of the art, then the people will not appreciate the unique insight on which your work is based on. Unless you talk about well, these guys did did it in this 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 different ways, but they all missed it looking at it this way, then it will become powerful. Simply saying, well, my work is based on this approach. People will not appreciate what your work is based on approach, unless you show that, look, these are the things that they tried, so many researchers have tried, and they didn't see that. They did not see that. And I am I'm contributing and, and uh, describing that particular one, right? So let's see this approach with, obviously, uh, one of the famous papers that are there uh, for our field which is the organic, uh, uh, one of the f uh, first papers on practical organic light emitting diode, right? So this paper has very high, this is the paper which launched basically the, uh, uh, the organic semiconductor field. I mean, it was there before that, but uh, the field was uh, progressing very slowly till this particular paper came out here. So let's see whether, you know, let's try and remember what our, uh, this thing is. Uh, whether they answer this particular question here, right? I, S, U, A, and L, right? So we'll evaluate against this, whether they answer this question here. Uh, see, uh, if, you look, if you read the first paragraph, 
Organic materials have previously been considered for fabrication of practical electroluminescent devices. The primary reason is that a large number of organic materials are known to have extremely high fluorescence quantum efficiencies in the visible spectrum. I mean, it's very common, all the, you know, the colors that you're wearing, all the dyes which are there, they're all uh, organic material based. And so they are, uh, it's known that the organic materials are highly uh, fluorescent, uh, including the blue region. See, he highlights the blue region. He highlights the blue region. Why? Because the paper came out in 1987. At that time, blue LEDs were not available. Blue LEDs were not available. People were struggling to obtain blue LEDs. And if you don't have a blue LED, then you don't have a white LED. White is obtained by mixing blue and yellow and all that. So you don't have white LED. And then if you don't have a white LED, then you know none of the bulbs and all that, you can't have that. Right? So he's highlighting that including the blue region approach. In this regard, he says they are ideally suited for multicolor display applications. So why is he talking about organic luminescent diodes? the problem has been clearly ident identified, right? So importance of the problem uh, that he's talking about here. Now, he comes about what is the state of the art. If you read, however, the development of organic EL devices has not been successful so far. And he's talking about the problems. Uh, being high voltage is generally required to inject charges into the organic crystals. And he's talking about state of the art. In early attempts by... Uh, Schneider and Dresner, the dry voltage was of the order of 100 volt or so. Uh, therefore, the EL device's power conversion efficiency is very low. He's talking about what others have done. What others have uh, done in this, in this particular uh, uh, regard that is there here. Uh, uh, you can see it more here. Uh, this is the importance of the problem that I just talked about. So, is addressing the importance here. This is uh, where they're talking about what others have done. He's talking about the work of Williams here, which obtained 100 volts here. Uh, power conversion efficiency is only 0.1%. Quantum efficiency is here. In an attempt to reduce the dry voltage, Vincent et al. used the organic films and all that. They obtained 30 volts, but the quantum efficiency is only 0.05%. Uh, uh, and, and so he is talking about what others have uh, basically done and is also talking about the uh, the stability is also an issue. How stable is uh, stable are the organic uh, materials that are there here, right? So the work of others is being addressed. What has happened in the past? Uh, the important, you know, this is a short paper. So the literature review or state of the art is not dealt with in lot of detail. But the important work that has that has uh, gone before uh, is is described here. Now he's talking about what unique insight is their work based on. So in this uh, letter, we report a novel thin film organic device, or whatever. It is efficient in contrast to, this is where he talks about, in contrast to most organic EL cells, which use a single layer of organic material sandwiched between the two injecting electrodes. Our EL consists of double layer of organic films with one layer capable of only monolayer transport. Here. So the unique insight or the unique approach that their work is based on is highlighted right here. See, this is all being done before talking about the details of the work, right? So this is where they're talking about here. Basically, in contrast, note that in contrast to the most organic EL cells which use a single layer of organic material, they are using a double layer. The organic materials were chosen such that morphological recombination and all that that is there. In addition, we use a low work function alloy prepared by vapor deposition and all that. So here is the unique insight that we are talking about, right? Our, our uh, is ISUAL, right? So the, here is this U part here, the unique insight on which their particular work is based on. Now they will come to the advantages, the results basically they will start showing here. The light output from the EL device they're saying is so much, external quantum efficiency is here, uh, the required drive voltage is 5.5 volts, power conversion efficiency 0.46% and things like that. The equivalent luminous efficiency is 1.5 lumens per watt which compares favorably with the commercial light emitting diodes at that particular point of time. So they're talking about the results part here. Uh, they're talking about uh, some limitations of uh, uh, their device here. The EL emission you can see shows a relatively fast degradation in the initial hours. Uh, the steady degradation is accompanied by increase in dry voltage from 6 to 7 volts. The nature of degradation is not clear, clearly understood. 
Some of the failure is attributed to degradation of both the hole and electron injecting contacts, the latter resulting in uh, this thing here. And finally, of course, summarizing. In conclusion, we have shown a novel diode with a double, this is the unique insight, double organic layer structure. Uh, it has all this uh, advantages that they're writing, fast response, low dry voltage, simplicity of fabrication, high efficient efficiency. Finally, this is, uh, you can see the importance of the work. It demonstrates that organic materials can indeed be viable alternatives for optoelectronic applications such as dysplasia. So they're saying that with this work, now you could realize. Before that, the voltages were very high, the efficiencies were low, the organic materials were not very suitable. Now, it demonstrates that organic materials can indeed be viable alternatives for optoelectronic applications such as this place. So it's opening up an entire field now. You can use these OLEDs for, for these displays here. So you can see that in some form a good work, a good work would uh, illustrate, uh, which is obvious, which will illustrate these things here. Right. I-S-U-A-L here, right? Right, so importance of the problem, the state of the art, the unique insight on which your work is based on, the advantages, of course, list all the advantages, fast response, efficiency, whatever, uh, as much as possible. This is conclusion, but when you are describing your uh, work, you have, you have to, of course, give quantification there. Fast response, how fast is it? Low voltage, how, how much lower voltage is it? And, of course, the limitations, right? So one should acknowledge uh, no work is complete, no work is final, that this is the last work, nothing more can be done on this. There's hardly a work like that, right? So there, there are... Uh, problems with your particular work also. And, and uh, it's good to be describe what the limitations of this particular approach are, where this particular work can be extended, right? So, uh, so these are uh, the five, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, uh, the five what, right? Five what? Five questions that you should try and answer. So, for example, whatever you're doing, try to cast it under, under these questions, right? And be very clear as to why are you working on that particular problem, right? Is it important? If it's not important, leave it, <laughs> right? There's no point in spending for PhD students, you know, spending five years answering, question, answering questions, developing answers, that at the end you will get your PhD. That is okay. But you want something more than a PhD. You want, uh, you know, ultimately when you are doing your research, you want to create an impact. So is my result valuable? It would be valuable only if the question is valuable, if the question is important. If the question is not important, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, the answers will also not be important, right? Now, sometimes it can be that you are trying to answer a question which maybe nobody has asked. Right? It could be, you could be in a situation that you're trying to answer a question that nobody asks. So if you scan literature, you find that people are not even looking at that particular. Then, if this is really true, then you're on to something very big. That a question has not been asked and you are asking it. And you think it's important, you believe it's important, there are reasons why it's important. Then you're on to something which is, uh, uh, a, 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 you know, a big contribution. That eventually if you solve it, it will have a big impact. Right? So I thought just very quickly uh, summarize it in, in the, so when you're presenting, uh, make sure in whichever form, I'm not saying you have to say uh, I and then, then write, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is in whatever form, address these aspects that are there, right? And some of these aspects you may be able to address only towards the end. For example, you don't know the limitations right now and all that, it will become clearer later on. The advantages will become you have some idea of some advantages, that this will yield those advantages, that's why you're pursuing it. But you don't have a quantification, you're doing still research, it's in progress, and, and therefore uh, you're trying to come up with answers that are there. Right, so uh, these five questions. In your thesis, you must address them. When you finally present your thesis, or you give a seminar, you must address them. All five questions that you're there, right? And uh, as I said, a major mistake is made where people are not, uh, maybe they talk about the importance of the problem a little bit, they say. The state of the art, they'll say a little bit, they will do a little bit about state of the art. Unique insight, they do not explicitly talk about it. 
what is that unique insight about which my work is based on? They don't talk about it. It's, it's somewhere buried. They spend a lot of time talking about here. All the, oh, I made this, I this, this, this result, this result, this result, that, the, all that is there here. It's a lot of time goes here. And all the advantages, results, and all that. Sometimes this gets buried here. Now, when an audience, uh, somebody is sitting there and is listening to your work for the first time, they're not going to remember all the details that are there, all the graphs that you showed, all those, they, they're not going to remember. They're going to remember what unique contribution is your work making. So that you must very explicitly highlight that. This is the contribution of my work. The rest are all, you know, sort of details that are there. And the only way you can talk about your contribution, how important is your contribution, people will appreciate that only when you talk about what is the state of the art. Right? If you're launching a mouse, uh, let's say, into the market here, the only way you'll say this mouse is the best mouse in the world or whatever, uh, unless people are familiar with mouses, right? If they, if they know what it is, what the problems are, and then you say it solves all those problems. If people are not familiar what the existing mouse does, then you say, I have a new mouse and it does this, they will not appreciate. So your job is to make them appreciate. They would not know because many in the audience would be sitting there and they would not know the problem that you are, because the knowledge has become so vast that uh, each one of us knows a very tiny fraction. So when you're going and presenting something, it's often uh, new things to everybody there. Right? So you, it's your task to talk about the importance of the problem, explain to them, and your task to talk about the important state of the art. Then your contribution of the work will come. This is my contribution. Right? Now, if, if there is no good contribution, maybe you don't want to talk about it. I don't know. So that's a different issue. But this is what we are all aspiring for, right? We are all aspiring for to talk about in this particular class context. All right. So let me, this was a short, this thing here. So let's, uh, let me stop here.